Hello, it's Sarah. I'm in my craft room. Anyway, I'm going to do a tutorial for you guys. Uh, a macrame plant hanger. Alright, so let me tell you what you're going to need. I am using, I'm going to use a wooden ring today. But I have used just a regular key, what a split ring. So whatever you have, these two I got from um, Amazon and it came with some dowels as well. But this one I got from Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby is now selling uh, macrame supplies. Um, it's in the beading aisle, kind of where the leather is and the um, stuff like that. So you're gonna need one of them. I'm gonna hook it right here. You're just gonna need some place that you can kind of, I've been using an over the door, over there, over my door. I have like a little coat rack thing over the door. That worked for me a ton. But I did end up getting, this is like a, um, a wardrobe, a wardrobe rack. I got this one at Target. It was around $35, $40. Because I've been doing it a lot, I just wanted a place to put all my stuff. You're going to need some rope, and I call it rope, it could be called cord. I personally like the cotton rope, and I've gotten this at on Amazon. And there's all different um, vendors there as well, so just go by your own price and how much you want it. I don't know how much this is, it's probably like 220 yards, does that make sense? I think it's a lot. Okay, and this is three millimeter, and I'm going to be working with three millimeter today. So, for comparison, you'll be able to see this is a four millimeter um, plant hanger. So, I'll show you the difference with a three millimeter. Um, because of the size of beads I want to use today, that's kind of why I'm using this because I have actually the beads have a nice size hole. So, depending on the hole in your bead, it's going to, you know you're not going to be able to fit a small hole with some of the rope. So for this one, there's only uh, so far, and there's a lot of ways you can do this. There's two, let's see if this is going to be in the shot. Yeah. So this one has four arms, I guess you would call it. And this one only has three. I'm going to do a three today. So to do, you always need four ropes for each arm. So you can just, if you wanted to make a six arm one, you could just divide by or multiply by four. So for today, we're only gonna need six ropes because we're gonna double it and that makes 12. Three times four is 12. So if I wanted, um, you would have 16, so you would only need eight ropes, you know? So it's divided by four each each arm or whatever needs four ropes because that's how you tie the knots. Okay, so for today, we're going to use six ropes, and I'll show you how I cut my rope. <clears throat> I'm trying to get in the shot. So one of the ways I used, was doing it was using the tiles on my kitchen floor because they're 12 inch tiles. That was how I was counting it, and I would take my spool into the kitchen and have the boys hold my spool. And then I was counting it up like that. Then I found, her name's the Crafty Ginger, and she does it like this. So I have this big heavy spool, and it would be good if I had like a dowel in here and it could just roll freely. And maybe I'll get Joe to hook me up a thing, I don't know. But for right now, I'm just gonna set it right on the floor. And because it's heavy enough, it won't go anywhere. What she does is she takes, let me just free it up. So you just take the end, and go like that and just stretch your arms out. I know I'm not in the shot. So that's one length. And I'm gonna do that twice to make my, so twice. And I'm gonna cut it. And I'll bet you this is about a 10 foot strand because I'm 5'5". Five five. I mean, my body length is, you know, so then when you double it, so now I have it, like I'm holding it and I'm evening it out. I'm just going to look at it. I want to say that's like five feet. I'm going to hold it at the floor. Yeah, like I'm five five and it comes to here. So now I have two working ropes at five something each. Okay, so I need six of these. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I mean, I guess 
I just like to do real time so that you guys see how long it takes and everything. So we'll do that again. And then I've also done it, um, I could just keep going, like hold this and fold it and fold it and fold it. But I'm just going to cut each one. So that's two. All right, I'll be right back after they're all cut. I don't want to take all the time. Okay, so I cut six. And I want to say they're 10 feet strands. And I'm just, I have them in my hand. And I'm just going to find the ends. Wait, I don't think I have six. I have five. One's on the floor. <laughs> All right, and I'm just going to even these ends up. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. So now I have all those ends, oh, except for this one. And then I'm just going to go to the middle. <coughs> I should have done this off camera too because I have a little knot. It's not a knot, but it's a tangle, shall we say. So yeah, so depending on the size, the length you want your plant to hang down, like actually my um, spider plant is, I got, it was a baby, it was like $4 at Lowe's and he's already grown and they go they grow up tall so like if I have um, succulents in the pot I don't need a very long my arms I'm calling these the arms of the hanger they don't need to be very long because succulents are shallow they're not going to grow out like that well some might anywho you can decide how long you want your um, plant hanger to be All right so that seems pretty even they should be even. Hey guys, it's like 80 degrees in May's Landing today in my city, uh, New Jersey, South Jersey, 80 degrees, well, 79. Um, it's crazy. So I'm in shorts and I have a fan on in here and it's actually not bad in the house. Okay, so they look pretty even and I'm a good enough. Don't drive yourself crazy. So I'm going to take, where did I put that? Oh, here. This ring. And look at the bottom. And this is about the middle. And I'm just going to put, hold my finger there and thread half of them through. And just check it again. Then I'm going to hang it on here. I'm just checking to see if it's even. Some of them are way longer than the others, and I, I think that's fine. No, I'm not even in the shot. All right, good enough. Okay, so we're going to do a gathering knot. Let me come over closer, and I'll zoom in at certain times, but for right now, I don't want to get caught up in zooming and stuff because this is already not perfect, like, cameraman work. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's called a gathering knot. I'm not exactly positive. And I'm just kind of straightening these to make them like flat at the top. Like say, I'll show you. Come in a little closer. See how I, I like, I make it like a little bit neat looking right there, but it's not a biggie. And then we're gonna wrap a rope around to gather them and have it nice and tight. So <clears throat> these are kind of overlappy. So I just have a lot of scraps hanging right here on my thingy. So this is about like a foot long. It actually has a piece of tape on the end because I use that to thread my, did I push record? Yes. What you're gonna do is take the end and you're gonna make a loop and just hold it right there. So you have a long side and a short side. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna place it on top of, and I know there should be some, nothing, like something behind here so that you can see so this isn't ideal for me, but I'm going to take this and put it right here, like I'm holding it, put my thumb over that, like that. And then you take your long end and just start wrapping around. And I'm going to go like around five times. One, and I like to kind of layer the rope. I go tight too. Two, three, four. I guess that's like five or six times. That'll be plenty. Then you take this end and put it through 
that loop we left down there. You can just leave it and kind of pull that. It pulls your loop up, this part. This is the other end of the loop. So then you can kind of just gently tug and you tug the end of your rope in underneath the knot. So now that's hidden. The loop went under the knot. So you have these two little ends hanging out. That's the front. If this was on the bottom like of a tassel, sometimes people leave this like this could be part of your tassel if it was on the bottom. But for right now, I'm going to cut both of those off. And then we're going to start making knots. I'm just going to let it fall into my basket. So, I mean, you know, you can see that I'm not a perfectionist. It's handmade. That's part of the magic of macrame. Turn it to the front. Now, we want to separate these into three sections of four, depending on how many things you want. It could be four sections of four, five sections of four. Just do the math. So for me, I have one, two, three. Three sections of four. Kiwi wants me. Maddie, you could bring her to me if you want. Can you let her get on your shoulder? I gotta go get her. Because Joe's working from home and he's on telecons all the time. Uh, by the way, yes, yeah, so hopefully everyone's okay and this will take your mind off whatever's going on outside, but do me a favor and don't watch the news. Here's what I like to do. I like to watch the 6.30 news. We have I guess I like to watch um, Channel 3, so it's like Nora O'Donnell comes on at 6.30. And that's all I watch. Like, you don't need to know every second what's going on. At the end of the day, put on the news, you get a little half hour of updates. And then, you know, I mean, then the president will do his breakthroughs, but I don't even turn the TV on all day, really. Um, I'm doing this, so, you know. But for those of you, because I got really addicted to CNN too, like when, like when the elect, let four years ago, and I've just tried to stop. You don't need to know every update, every second. You know, we actually went to um, Acme and Walmart today because we wanted to, we needed almond milk, and you know, we're spoiled. We got had got to have our almond milk. So then, and they had it. They had it actually at Walmart. Um, but there's no toilet paper, there's no napkins, there's no tissues, there's no paper products. But anyway, let's do macrame and relax. But anyway, everyone's here, so that's what I'm saying. We're kind of self-quarantined, but we did go out. I'm bad, I know, but anyway, I'm sorry. Is she here? Are you filming? Yeah, I'm filming. Okay, sorry. You want to see Matt? You can be on camera. There's Matt. You want to be on camera? <laughs> but do you need me? I can't get the bird on here. My thing well, is if she, that's true. Anyway, all right, though. all right. I'll yeah. come get her if she keeps cheaping. I have to because she Joe's back there. So we, anyway, you don't need to know. All right. So to start out, I'm going to copy this one. I'm just going to do the same thing that this has, only it's a smaller version. So I want to show you the difference in the millimeters. Mm, I'm going to start out with one, two, three square knots. So let's see. I've also copied patterns from pictures um, and stuff like that, and it's easy because you can count the knots and you can count the strings. So I'm going to just tip down a little bit, maybe, okay, good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, hopefully it'll be good, oh, all right, good, perfect. You can count these, one, two, three square knots are right there, um, one, two, three square knots. You can tell. You'll, you'll start to get the hang of it after you've done it a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing, but this is a three millimeter rope compared to, and this might even be a five. I don't know. This might be a five. I had some five because uh, Michael's has uh, some different ropes. All right, but I'm going to take my first leg, arm, what do you want to call it. We're going to make a square knot. Now to make a square knot, and listen, I'm not going to do a real like heavy tutorial on knot making. I'm just going to tell you to go watch another video of knot making and then practice on keychains. That's what I did. 
but to make a square knot you need your four strands and these two are what are going to make the knot and we're wrapping it around these two. So you're going to make a number four across all of the strings like that. See the number four? That's what everybody says. Hold them, then you're going to take your fourth one and take it and put it over and push it behind through that little number four thing and that's the top part of your knot. That's the first step. And if we were going to make a spiral, which we're going to make in a minute, you just keep going doing the same thing and it starts to spiral. But to finish the square knot, now we're going to take the right side and make the number four. So you're over all your things. I'm pushing it. And then you take your last one and go over it and then push it behind and through that hole we made. And then just hold those ends and kind of let it come up. And I let the knot make itself sometimes. Sometimes it gets crooked, but for the most part, if you just let the knot, the rope pull up, it'll make it a nice kind of square knot. So we're going to do that again. I'm going to make three. So I make the number four, take this one and go behind, like over that one and behind. That's the top part of the knot. And then we do it from the right side. Take this one and go over that and behind. That's two, and you can tell you finished it because my little, it'll come like that. And I'm, I believe you can make square knots the other way too. So if you're left-handed or whatever, you can start on the right side and finish on the left, and it still makes a square knot. I just prefer to do left to right. That's how I've been doing it. And finish. And then I also can tell that I finished it. Because see, the same thing is happening on this side as that side, but now I know I finished it. So there's three square knots there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on all of these, but I'm just gonna finish this one side first. Now, the other thing that happens, as I'm using these two working cords to make the knots, they get shorter and shorter and shorter because I'm using them up. And these middle ones don't get shorter, they just stay long because I'm tying the knot around it. And Emily Faith, She's a YouTuber. She's kind of more of a thrifter and a boho girl, but she does a couple macrame tutorials, and she's the first one I found that I watch. So you can trade places, and it kind of makes a cool little extra design. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from these two being on the outside to these two being on the outside, and it makes this little X design, which kind of looks cool, but then you also stop... I'm going to use all the ropes equally so that I don't get just like two really short stubby ropes and a bunch of long ones. Okay. So now we're going to make that transition. So I'm going to take these two outer ones, open up the middle, and put them in the middle and have these on the outside. So see how it makes that diamond pattern? Let me turn my... Let me come a little closer. I have room. I'm kind of... I'm, I'm filming with the mantle, like the, the camera's on my mantle. Yeah, that's not bad. All right. It's not ideal, but, you know, I'm just making this video for you guys so we don't have to watch the coronavirus all day. <laughs> so now these outside ones, so let me show you again. So I have my four cords. You're just going to open those middle two and put these in the middle. And then you get that diamond shape. Now we're going to make a knot. So you still take this outside one and make your number four cross all of them, right? And then you take this one, which we moved, and go over and behind. So it'll this will be a it'll look a little different, but see how I have that diamond shape? Okay. And then we're gonna make some spirals. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this a little longer today. I'm gonna make it like around a two inch approximately, right? And now we're not gonna finish it. I'm just gonna keep going left, left, left. So I'm just going to take it and keep making the first part of a square knot and this becomes a spiral. And I think they call it a signet, like there's a lot of different names for it. I just call it a spiral and all I'm doing is just keep making this left side knot and it just starts to spiral on its own. Oops, I hit the thing. Am I in the shot? I'm going to try and tip it down a little. And I may change places if, if it becomes, you know, because we're going to go lower. I might move over to that um, hanger. So see, it's, it's turning on its own. Just keep 
keep going. How many should I make? Let's see. I think because we're going to put two beads and then some more spiral. This is going to be like the center of our um, I think I'm going to make like at least 10, maybe 15, Let's, so you can count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's 10. Hmm, I'm going to go 12, see what 12 looks like. 11, 12, 13, 14, I'm going to do 15. So this is 15. I don't know why. Maybe I don't need 15, but this, I have a lot of rope. I think we're going to be good. Now I'm going to add beads. Now the beads that I, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other two strands. So let me move this back. I want to get my beads and I'll talk about beads a little bit. Let me unzoom, unzoom. Okay, so these beads I got on Amazon. I hate it because I don't want our box or um, brick, brick and mortar stores to close, but they don't have what you want sometimes. They're glass. They came in this little cute little thing. Um, I don't know what brand they are or anything. And they have a nice size hole. I want to say this is a seven millimeter hole. Nice size hole. I'm going to have to pick a color. Mm, I think I'm going to use two, four, six. I'm going to use these brown ones. They're just brown. They're like golden. Actually, I think I'm going to use these. These are like actually, they look a little yellowy. No, nope, I'm going to use these. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to put them in my pocket. And then I'm going to take a piece of tape. This is just scotch tape. I might put it up here so I can have access to it. And I'm going to take the middle two ropes, go to the end, and I'm going to take my tape lay this across the bottom of my tape and then I'm just going to gently roll it to make like a, um, a shoelace end, right? Just so that we can thread the bead easier. So now I have this little shoelace Johnny, okay? So now I'm going to go back to my other one. So these two middle ones are the ones that you're going to thread the bead through. And because this is three millimeter, I might not even need the tape for this because this is three, these are three millimeters. So two three millimeters is six millimeter, and I think this is a seven millimeter hole. But it's probably just going to be easier. So for this one that I didn't put the tape on, I just kind of take it and bend it like that. Like I bend it, and then I just kind of take the bead and like screw it through the hole. Yeah, like this is going right through with no problem. It just went right through. This is a nice big hole. And then I take that other one that has the um, tape on it and push that through as well. And then you pull your bead all the way up to the top. I'm going to have to move my camera down, I think, because the I don't have any other way to hang this higher unless I go over to... Um, there and it's much better light here but anyway let me just do this you know what I can do I can move back and zoom in probably so let me just do this real quick because this is how you're going to attach a bead to it all right so I just push the bead up to the top and I just can oh I'm going to make actually I'm going to make a square knot here to, in between the beads so you just can like, so there's the bead. I'm just making a square knot, just like I would. A number four, go under and through, and then just snug this up. Push your bead up and snug it up right there. And then take and finish, finish your square knot. And I just let it snug up. 
Now we're going to put another bead. So I'm going to put another, okay. And because we're still using the same middle ones, just going to do the same thing. Push this through. These really are a pleasure, these beads. I want to see if they just sell a bunch in one color. I haven't looked lately because they're amazing. They're beautiful. They're good quality. They're pretty colors. Everything. So now I have two beads. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm not a good photographer. That's why I love my setup over by my desk. But that should get in focus. Make a no Oh no, now we're just going to spiral again. So what did I do? 15 spirals? I think I did. So we're just going to spiral. So just make sure, like, when I, I just have to snug this up, see, it's snugged, and then I just make spot, I'm going to keep going 15 times, one, that's two, actually, three, four, and it just spins on its own, five, I just check it from time to time, make sure. I like to make sure these don't get crossed. I don't know. It's just a little thing I do. Now, how many is that? One, two, that's five. Six. Seven. And even when it starts to turn, just keep going. Don't, like, I can turn it and make another one, and it doesn't mess it up. I don't know how. It's like magic. It's the magic of macrame. I think that was seven or eight. I'll count them in a minute. So you just keep going. Why am I getting stuck there? Probably because I turned it and I'm trying to say, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, I want to show you something. 12, 14, 14, 15. And then I'm going to show you something. We're going to switch sides again. We're going to do this little, um, well, I can't because I'm zoomed in. I'm going to unzoom a tiny bit and just show you. I want to switch sides again because look, let's go down to the bottom of these ropes. Now look, see these two are much shorter and then look how much longer that those middle two are. But we're going to switch sides again. So let's see if I can keep going. Just ha I'm going to have to, you know what, I'm going to get um, my little stool because I actually... I can't sit, like, I am old. I hate to tell you this, I'm very old. Okay. Nope, it's not, it's way too loud. All right, I'm gonna have to, I'll get on down like this. All right, sorry. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna switch sides. So take these two, put them in the middle of those two. Start your, let's see, we're gonna make, we're gonna make some square knots again. But see, I don't feel like this is long enough. Um, what did I make it, like two inches? Yeah. That looks good. And I'm going to make a square knot, so I want to finish it on the right. Let's make three. And then see if I want to make more. i got to finish it. See, I almost went left again. Sometimes I forget where I'm at and you can see the knots. It's just like crocheting or whatever. You can see your stitches. So you can tell where you're at. You'll get used to it. And then, so there's three of them. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other arms of my macrame. And then I want to see if I want to continue and make this longer. Uh, I might, you guys. I might want to do a few more of the, and I think I'm going to do like at least five square knots down here. Hmm. So I have a lot more rope. One, two, three, four, 
I'll do five square knots at the bottom. And listen, it might change because that's the beauty of this. They're just knots and I can untie them as easy as I just made them. So there's five square knots down there. So what I'm going to do is go away and I'm going to come back when all the arms are done. So I'll have all my beads on, all my knots tied, and we're going to get to the part where we're going to create the holder. I don't know what the terminology is, but where we have to connect everything and make a little place for the plant to hold the plant. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I finished all three arms or legs or whatever. And here's the one thing, this is the hardest part for me when I first started doing this was to be able to get the, okay, so I'm gonna aim it over here. I have different examples of plant hangers depending on the size of the pot you're gonna use. So for my succulent pot, it's a, it's a flatter, like it's not as deep this way. And all you really need to do now, because this has three, if you're using a wide pot like this way, maybe you need more strands. Like three isn't gonna be good to hold it, but it worked out for this one pretty well. Um, and what I figured out over trial and error was that I like my design to stop right at the rim of the pot-ish like right around the rim of the pot. That's kind of how I'm measuring. And then when you do, see, I think I might need to, no, you can still see it in the shot. So this knot right here that we put, because we're gonna join them, all right? So here's one too. Let me take this one. And this has a white planter in it, but, and this one, I just made this one last night because this is the spider plant and all of my hangers were kind of, they weren't very long. This part wasn't very long. And the, the actual plant was hitting up here and it wasn't good. So I made this one much longer. So I got it good enough, but as a rule, I like this to sit right on the edge, the rim of the pot I'm using. And then you can put your other knots here. And then, so for this, width of a pot like say maybe a six inch would that be like a six inch pot so this is another one that i am using um just as a sampler this is like a piece of of what is it milk glass but it's about the size it's i would say it's at least a six inch mouth on the pot and it's probably at least six or seven inches long as well and that's kind of what I've been using as a rule of thumb size of a pot. Um, but like, I have this little succulent pot, right? So this is a terracotta pot. This isn't going to fit the same as this. So let me just, all right, hey, you know what, this is really wet. I have to realize I don't need to um, water my succulents as often as uh, other plants. Okay, so I took that out, and I'm going to see, just for showing you, what this looks like, how this fits in there. So this is probably, I'll say a six inch on top, but it's only like two, like that. I don't want to mess up my succulents, but I don't even think this is going to work. So this is the thing about making macrame. You can design it to fit a specific pot you have because the ones at the store are already like ready to go for a certain size that you might not have, like this one specifically. It would be a little more um, specific, right? All right, so it's definitely gonna hold it. It'll hold it. I don't wanna hurt you guys. I don't wanna hurt you. Yeah, like it holds it actually. I mean, that doesn't look too bad. But see what happens is because this is the top, this I would prefer to be like it, it went back in. So anyway, if I was making it for this specific succulent, which I actually might make one for this, it's so cute. 
But then again, I wouldn't need such a long, like you could really make a much more stubbier, um, like this one I think is for a succulent. But it was for a, like a, maybe a two inch around um, pot, maybe a three by three or something like that. So yeah, this doesn't work in this hanger, right? So that's what you're gonna be able to do if you make them for yourself, <coughs> you can customize it to fit whatever pot you're using. So like, in other words, what I'm saying is this is much shorter. My pot is gonna end right here. I think I made this for a little um, succulent in there. I'm gonna go get it and I'm gonna show you what I mean. It's a pigeon. So this, is I want to say three by three approximately right it's a little thing and oh, there's a yellow jacket I think I have a nest somewhere near my fireplace of a yellow jacket nest or wasps get away from me I don't freak out but yeah go over there all right so <clears throat> And see, I used a um, key ring on this one. So I, in general, you don't need as much decorative um, rope on the top because it's, now see, that's perfect. So this knot is perfect to hold it in place. And then the work stops right here. So you can do a much shorter, and I should have put the beads up higher. Like maybe I'll redo this one. See, because what I'm thinking is you should put your fanciest work at the top of the um, arms because the plant is going to cover the bottom. Like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so this one. This is the one I just made. Kiwi hears me talking because all of a sudden I started talking much louder. Like... The plant, the foliage, right, is going to be all in the bottom of them. So you could put your fancier stuff up higher on the ropes if you're following me. Now, like this, I think, is going to stay here. I think this one looks fine. I think it has enough room to grow, and then it'll make babies. Um, so I'm going to hang you over here for a second. And then your succulents, you know... I'm not going to, I'm putting mine on a windowsill. I'm not going to put them in hangers, but I am definitely tempted to put this guy. I'm going to make one for this guy today because the difference would be, so when I'm making, where's the one we're working on? Where did I put it? I'll lay it over here. Here he is. So if I was going to, um, <clears throat> make this hanger for this specific planter. You just have to take it like this. It's a little fudgy and just kind of put the knots at the top. Like I said, I like them to be at the top. So the work that we did stops at the rim of this. Then you're going to have to figure out. So you take to connect these, we're going to take two ropes, from each side. So I take two and two, and then these two and two, and then those two and two, I'll show you. But you kind of have to figure out, like by holding it like this, so it's very tricky, how far over to make your knots. So I'm gonna say, let's make this one to hold this, because I actually really like it for this. I'm gonna say right here, I don't know if I'm even in the shot, you guys, because I'm so far down. I am. I'm going to make a square knot with these two ropes right here. And it's, I'd say like two inches. This space is about two inches. I'm just going to make one. So that plays into how the pot's going to sit in there. I really want to move this. I know what I'll do.
I have this little table. I'm just going to try and move this down and then I can shoot up a little better. Let's see. Right here is my hand. Okay. I think I'm in the shot. So I've joined these two together. You need to do that to all three of the things, but I'm going to take my pot and put it up here again and just see if it's going to, if it seems like this is going to be wide enough because this is about, oh yeah, I think I did good. See, look, can you see that? So you want this knot to sit here and then when we gather, it'll go under, but let me get a sh little view from above. Huh. Yeah, I think I'm going to do two, two, and two, and that makes sense because, ah, there may be measurements involved. Like, say this is a six-inch pot. It makes sense if I do these knots two inches apart, two inches apart, two inches apart, or two, four, six, two, four, whatever. I don't know. I'm not a mathematician, but I'm going to take two strands from both sides, from both or whatever they're called, arms or legs. And I'm just going to like eyeball it and make a square knot there. Hopefully this is going to work first time for on camera. I love it. I love it when that happens. All right, flip this around. And then see how they're joined? It looks pretty. Then you take your last two knots make a square knot here and remember guys they're just knots we can untie them just be patient it's worth it because i'm excited don't i get i get way too excited over stuff don't i oops all right so hopefully this is going to stay six inches so here's my pot I like this little terracotta pot. Now I got this at Lowe's, I want to say, or Home Depot. Did I get this at Home Depot? I think I got it at Lowe's and it came like this. So one, two, three, four. There's like at least five different kinds of succulents in here for, I want to say it was um, six or seven dollars. Like that's a really good deal. Because when you buy them separate, it's a lot more expensive. But I did that because I wanted them all to be in little containers. All right. Ooh, I got to get down again. Make sure this goes open. Snuggle it down. Oh, man. I think we did good, guys. So I just want this to sit right on the rim. And this has a lip to it, so it's kind of, but that looks great. I think I like it. Now, sometimes I've seen them maybe on an extra tall pot, like maybe if you had a really deep pot, you could just keep making square knots, square knots, and it would make that little diamond shape pattern going all the way down the side of your pot, or you could really just fill this in. I haven't done that yet, but all I'm going to do is tie a knot down here. Do another one of those gathering knots right about and i'm just going to eyeball it. i want the i'm going to pull these down under this lip yeah like right there so i want to say right to here is where i'm going to make my gathering knot so i'm just going to eyeball that try to take this out and we're going to do the same thing we did at the very top. So I'm just getting a piece of my um, scrap. And you just hold all, I kind of make them face the center type thing. Now I hope I remember how low to make it. Because sometimes I've had to cut these off. Oh, I'm not even in the shot. Sorry. Here I am. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Make a little loop. So you have a long side and a short side. Put it on here. 
Was that approximately where we were, guys? Oh man, this is so fudgy. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And it's under a pot, so you don't really see this knot as much as you see the top one. And then you stick the end of it in the loop. Just give this a little tug and you pull that right there. I mean, you don't even have to really pull the loop. The loop just goes under and then you're good. And then you can see like this is the end of that cord. It can actually be down. I think it's a different um, millimeter. These scraps were from my last batch of three um, millimeter. But anyway, I'm gonna check it first before I cut anything. Hopefully this is gonna fit. I had to stand up, you guys. Oh, MJ. Oh, getting old. Yeah, it messed up. That's for why is that so far away? That is weird, guys. That I messed up. But you know what? It's great to mess up for you guys so you see what I'm doing. Yeah, it's way too much space down here. Can you see that? I want it to be up here. So it's only going to be half that distance. This has been the hardest part for me, and I can't sit like this. This is driving me crazy. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move over to, um, over to my door. I can't. I'm too old. I'll be right back. I'm going to tie it and I'll be back. All right, you guys, I think I did it. It's a little, no, it's actually really close. See how the work stops at the rim of the bowl. I mean, it's a little, you know, and this I would prefer to be exact, but like I said, I'm a good enough. See, I left the old one on here because I want to show you how I fix it, but it fits. I like it. I absolutely love it because, um, and here's the other thing I do. I generally separate these like on this big pot. You can separate them, but actually I did it on this one. I don't know. I'm going to take this off of here. I want to show you. Okay, so my scissors are super dull, but you just got to take gently. You don't want to cut the fibers of the other ropes, but as long as you get one of those cut off, you're good. You just untwist it. That was my other one that I messed up. Now, there's also these, um, see look, I cut a fiber of the other rope. Um, so I'm going to try and cut this one. <laughs> Don't, Kiwi, that was right in my ear. And then, I think I'll make my fringe, like this one I went pretty long. I like the fringe on this one, and I'm going to show you one more thing. So, like, I could make it all, let's see, I'll make it long right now. But, um, then this little one that's here, this was actually from the tire. I'm gonna I'm gonna make them all that once. So, all right. But now here's one of the cool things. I'm gonna bring. It, oh, sorry, Kirby. Sorry, Kirby. All right. I am down on the floor. This is terrible. <laughs> um. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Is it still raining? No, it's not. Perfect. Okay. But I'm so happy because these little br um, brown glass beads match the brown beads on here. Like, I'm just happy. It makes me happy when things match. And my house is not boho at all. Anyway. Alright, so you take these. Now, this type of rope is made up of three strands. So I'm like un twisting it, and then you just pull apart. And you know when you braid your hair? and then you take it out the next day, 
that's what your hair looks like. Anyway, I know people, sometimes there's different ropes that are just literally like fibers and you can take a comb and comb it and it makes it like total fluff. I said total a lot in that sentence. But this is the look that I'm liking right now is these little curly cues. So basically it'll look like this, these curly cues. So that was it you guys. Like can you see the whole thing? I'm the worst aimer. And that's, you know, my experience, I'll come on the shot, with macrame. And I enjoy it right now because it's spring. It just feels so good that, like, I'm working with dirt and flowers again. Anyway, so hopefully you'll try it. It's not that hard. Have fun. Thanks for watching.